Here we go with unit four, topic seven. We are gonna take a look at types of chemical reactions. So this is a little introduction to um, be able to identify an acid base reaction, an oxidation reduction reaction, or a precipitation reaction. And then the next couple of sections will go more in depth on acid base and oxidation reduction. We've done already done some on precipitation. That's really where we were doing net ionic equations, um, determining the solid that's formed and all of that. So we're, we will end up going in depth on the other two. So to identify the type reaction type, we want to analyze the chemicals that are involved and take a look at what kind of chemicals we have. So we'll look for some specific things there. We'll take a look at states of matter because as certain states of matter appear, it'll help us recognize certain reactions um, happening. And then we want to analyze if a chemical has changed charge. So has it gone from being an individual element to something in a compound or vice versa, because that's gonna be an indication that charge has changed and um, indicate the type of reaction. So we're gonna start with acid-base reactions. Acid-base reactions can be recognized by the chemicals involved and their products. So we really wanna analyze those chemicals that are involved here. The reaction is also called a neutralization reaction because when we do an acid and a base, oftentimes they neutralize or create a more neutral pH. An acid is a chemical that donates or gives up a hydrogen ion during the reaction. So to be an acid, you really have to have that hydrogen ion hanging out in your formula. So we've got some examples here. These are all strong acids and we're gonna be learning about the strong versus weak acids in our next section. But our strong acids like hydrochloric, hydride, iodic, hydrobromic, um, this is nitric acid, HNO3, and sulfuric acid, the NH2SO4. Those all have a hydrogen in front, and that is a key indication that we have an acid. And during the reaction, those hydrogens are gonna be given to another chemical, and that indicates, um, or that defines it as an acid. Now the other part of an acid-base reaction is the base. And a base is a chemical that accepts a hydrogen ion during the reaction. Many of the bases we will encounter also contain the hydroxide ion, that OH minus ion, one of the polyatomics that I wanted you guys to memorize at the beginning of the semester. So we've got some of our um, strong bases here. We've got sodium hydroxide, NaOH, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide. So all of these are strong bases. We, they've all got um, either group one or group two metal, and then the hydroxide ion to balance the charge. So to create a neutralization reaction, we can pair one of these acids with one of these bases, and we can see what happens. So we've got HBr, so that is our acid. I'm not on my tablet, so it's a little harder to draw. Um, and then we've got lithium hydroxide, so that's our base. So as they're defined, the acid gives up the hydrogen ion and the base accepts it. So what accepts it here is this hydroxide part. So the hydrogen and the hydroxide come together and we get water, which is neutral. And then the rest of it, we've got lithium and bromine. Lithium's our positive ion, bromine's negative ion. They create an ionic compound, also called a salt. So neutralization reactions are determined by having that acid and base, having that exchange of hydrogen, but also that they create water and salt. Remember, a salt is just an ionic compound. Um, in this case, let's see, lithium bromide, and it is aqueous. Um, if we look at the next one, we have a similar pattern. Again, we've got an acid because it has that hydrogen. We've got that base with the hydroxide that can accept the hydrogen and those come together to form water. It doesn't matter, again, I hope we're, we know this at this point, but I'm just gonna emphasize it. Your products that you draw, it doesn't matter if the water's first or the, the salt is first, it's that you're adding them together or you're, you're just placing them on the right side of the arrow, um, they can go in any order. So it makes water, and then our salt in this case is sodium and the nitrate coming together, sodium's positive, so it comes first we get sodium nitrate. And again, that is aqueous. So we would basically make salt water when we add these acid and base together. 
Now this happens when we have a strong acid and strong base. Later this year, we will explore way more in depth on um, acid-base reactions and if it creates um, a more strong product or weak or all of that stuff, we'll, we'll get way more in depth. Right now, our focus is to be able to recognize an acid-base reaction. And then in our um, next section, we'll look a little bit more on um, just determining with the acid and base and a few other details. So we recognize an acid-base reaction. We look for that acid, that hydrogen in front for that chemical. We can look for hydroxides to be a base, and we can look in the products for a water and salt. All right. Let's take a look at oxidation reduction reactions. We also call these redox reactions, R-E-D-O-X, redox, okay? So let's look at what this means. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, okay? When you lose electrons, um, the charge of the substance will increase and we call that oxidation. So for instance, if um, sodium, drawing this the best I can, as a solid, right, we have solid sodium. If it reacts and becomes its ion form, that is positive, and A plus, so when it becomes a positive ion, like when it reacts and becomes sodium chloride, um, it has been oxidized, it's lost electrons. So anytime we create a positive ion or anytime an element's charge goes up, it is going through an oxidation, okay, losing electrons. So oxidation is loss. And that's a way we can start remembering these. I've got two little, or a little acronym for you. So oxidation is loss, oil. And then reduction. Reduction is the gain of electrons. When gaining electrons, the charge of the substance decreases. It is literally reduced. So when we look at something, let's say chlorine gas, we react it and we get chlorine ions, like two chlorine ions. And then maybe it, re it comes together with the sodium and we get sodium chloride. Well, the charge has gone from no charge over here because it's neutral, it's its elemental form, to having a charge of minus one, its charge goes down. It is literally reduced. So it has gone through a reduction reaction. So when something gains electrons, so the chlorine would have to gain more negative things to become more negative, its charge decreases and it goes through reduction. So reduction is the gain of electrons. So to remember this, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, we can use the term oil rig to help us. All right, so simple redox reactions will have a single element becoming an ion or an ion becoming a single element by itself. Um, so we're looking for that change between something being in its elemental form and then being in a compound, changing its charge. Um, redox reactions have to occur with oxidation and reduction. You can't have oxidation without reduction. The electrons, if, if something loses electrons, they have to go somewhere and something else has to gain them. So they're always paired together. Um, so we have some chemical reactions that are also reduc um, redox reactions. So combustion reactions um, and single replacement reactions are always going to be reduction or redox reactions. Um, so let's take a look down here. We've got this first one is a combustion reaction. CH4 is methane, react burning with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. It's that traditional um, set up a combustion reaction. Well, the oxygen is by itself in its elemental charge, so it's neutral, has no charge in its elemental form. And then is in compounds on the right side. So it will have changed its number of electrons to be able to form those compounds. And we're gonna look at how we can, can track those electrons again in the last section. Um, but it's changed. It's going from being neutral to being in a compound. So that makes it a redox reaction. Okay, so combustion reactions are always going to be redox reactions, okay? The other one that's always gonna be um, 
redox reactions every time is a single replacement, okay? So down here, where's my single replacement? Here we go. The last one is an example of single replacement. We've got magnesium all by itself, so no charge. And then it becomes part of a compound on the right side. And magnesium over here would have a two plus charge because it's an ion. So it's going from no charge to having a charge. And its charge is going up. So that's that oxidation, it's that loss of electrons. Um, and then we can also see that sodium ends up by itself over here. So sodium started in a compound with a positive charge and ended with no charge. So its charge has gone down. It's been reduced. So we've got magnesium being oxidized, sodium being reduced. And so there's this exchange of electrons occurring. So that is a redox reaction. So those are always redox reactions when you have single replacement and you have combustion. Now, other ones that typically can, can result in a redox reaction are also synthesis and decomposition. So those are also listed here, synthesis and decomposition. So those are middle two. So our first one, we're taking sodium and chlorine and making sodium chloride. That is a synthesis. So we've got our elemental form with no charge on sodium, no charge on chlorine. And then we have sodium being positive and chlorine being negative. Sodium loses its electrons. Chlorine gains electrons. Um, and so they're changing their charge, and that's going to be that exchange of electrons to create that change in charge. So that'll be redox. All right. The other one here is our H2O2. So this is a decomposition. We're breaking down uh, hydrogen peroxide. So we've got oxygen in that compound, and then we've got oxygen by itself. Um, we've got a peroxide and then just the oxygen in water and then the oxygen by itself. So it is changing that charge is going from being in a compound to being by itself in that elemental form. So that's going to be a redox reaction. And again, in our last section, we're going to be able to track, we're going to be able to assign a charge to everything, even covalent compounds, which are it's a little weird. Um, we call it an apparent charge or an assigned charge. And so it helps us track the electrons a little bit more, all right? And that'll help us see more that these things are exchanging those electrons. But for now, being able to look for those individual elements by themselves and then those elements in a compound and that change is gonna help us recognize something as a redox reaction. All right, and then our last one is our precipitation reactions. So, um, this is when we have two aqueous solutions reacting to form a solid precipitate. So we've seen these um, quite a few times now. We've seen these in our lab and um, we've done net ionic equations a lot with them. So we've got two aqueous solutions, so two salt solutions essentially. They're dissolved. We've got you know these free ions floating around in our solutions. We pour them together and two of them come together and form something that's insoluble. We get that solid. And again, that solid is your precipitate. Okay, so the solid form from two aqueous solutions. That was one of our uh, mastery check questions too. And then the other part that's left is still aqueous. So this is still broken into its two ions. Those ions are floating around in solution. So we wanna look at those states of matter really and be analyzing like, okay, we've got a couple of salts, they're aqueous, we get a solid from that, that's our precipitate. So that's really how we recognize these. So our second one, we've got lead acetate, which is aqueous, potassium bromide aqueous. We put them together, we get lead bromide, which is insoluble, so that's our solid, that's our precipitate. Ooh, arrow got crazy. Um, and then we've got the aqueous potassium acetate. So again, that's going to be dissolved. Those ions are just going to stay in solution. All right, lastly, let's just take a look at an example and we'll work through um, the, oh my gosh, <laughs> the answers to these. So categorize each as a neutralization, redox, or precipitation reaction. Okay, so looking at this first one, I'm going to start with my seats of matter. I've got a solid and an aqueous, aqueous and gas. So I'm not getting that solid formed, so it's not precipitation. Um, and then we've got neutralization and redox. So I do see an acid. I've got hydrogen. 
um, there in front. So that is an acid, but I don't really have one of those bases. I'm not neutralizing and creating water. So it's not really neutralization. But what we do have is a solid zinc that's by itself in its elemental form. And then we've got it in a compound. So it must have changed charge. It's got a two plus charge over here in that ionic compound. So it's neutral and then became two plus. That means it's going up in charge. So that is oxidized, that loss of electrons. Um, we've also got hydrogen over here, which is positive and it's making hydrogen gas, which is neutral. So it's going down in charge, it's being reduced, whoa. Um, so that first one is a redox reaction. It is a single replacement. Zinc is replacing the hydrogen, kicking hydrogen out by itself. So we got that single replacement being shown there and um, we've got that change in charge. So that's our redox reaction. All right, our second one here, I've got, I'm gonna start with my state of matter again. Two aqueous solutions, I'm forming a solid and an aqueous solution. All right, so we've got our, all of our dissolved ions on the left. I do have an acid here with the hydrogen in front, but I'm creating that solid, right? That's that key indication that we are creating that precipitate, that solid, insoluble salt. So that is gonna be a precipitation reaction. All right, our next one, we got C5H10 plus oxygen, um, making carbon dioxide and water. That is our classic combustion reaction. We said combustion is always gonna be a redox reaction because it always has this oxygen that's neutral and then the oxygen in two compounds at the end. So that's gonna be our redox reaction that's also combustion. All right, let's take a look at the last one. We've got lithium hydroxide, we've got that OH base, aqueous. We've got this hydrogen in front, there's an acid and it's aqueous. We're creating water over here. So we're neutralizing our substance. Um, and then we've got lithium acetate. So that's a salt, we've got an ionic compound, with our two positive and negative ions. So this is our classic acid-base reaction. So acid plus base, those hydrogen and hydroxide make water, and then we've got our salt left over. So that's how we can start breaking these down and recognizing our different types of reactions. We've got a little bit of practice on this, and then um, we'll go more in depth on redox and acid base in the next two sections. All right, thanks guys.